First Chronicles chapter 10. Now we come with all these names, we come to an end. Now the Philistines, they're from Ham, Genesis 10, and First Chronicles 1 12, Genesis 10 14. I haven't seen their name in a while. Fought against Israel. That's 1 Samuel 31. And the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines. Their retreat, leaving, and fell down slain on Mount Gilboa, Gilboa, dead. They're losing the battle. Philistines are in victory. And the Philistines followed hard after Saul. That was their main target. He's King Saul. And after his son. And the Philistines slew Jonathan. He should have never been there. And Abinadab and Malshua, the sons of Saul. Now, let's take ourselves to chapter 9, verse 39. And Ner begat Kish, Kish begat Saul, Saul begat Jonathan, Malchusha, and Abinadab. Where is Ashbaal? He's missing. I, I mean, I don't know what happened to him, but he's not there to die with his father. And he's not there listening to uh, Samuel either, First Samuel. I don't know if he's dead. I don't know what, what happened to him, but he's not there with his brothers. Verse 3. And the battle went sore against Saul. And the archers. You remember the first hunter, mighty hunter, Nimrod? Remember Esau was a hunter with arches? Remember Benjamin were good, was good with the bows and arrows and stones, left-handed? The archers hit him, and he was wounded of the archers. Now, he's not dead. They just pull that bow and arrow, and they wound him. Then said Saul to his armor bearer. Now, look what's happened here with King Saul. We've gone from his family, chapter 9, verse, th oh, actually chapter 9, over 37, down to where he's mentioned in 39, and we pick him up in chapter 10, dying. Chronicles list nothing of the life of Saul, but his death. He, we're going to read by the end of this chapter, he rebelled against God, he went against God, and we're going to close off Saul, Why? Because there's coming a man named David. And we got to record that the first king of Israel, entire, saw, we got to record his death before we can put David on the throne. Verse 4 Then Saul said to his armor bearer, Draw thy sword and thrust me through therewith, lest these uncircumcised come and abuse me. So he is so injured. I ain't coming off this battlefield. And what they're going to do is they're going to find me here and they're going to torture me. They're going to beat me. They're going to have their thrills with me. And I'm not going to die an easy death. So he's asking his armor bearer saying, kill me. But his armor bearer would not for he was sore afraid. So Saul took a sword and fell upon it, suicide. And I believe this is the first one in the Bible, first suicide. And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise on, his, on the sword and died. So here's two men in battle dead by their own will. What an end. Here's his first king. This young man going out looking for asses comes up across Samuel. And Samuel anoints him for the ministry. He says, hey, you're going to be, you know, you're going to prophesy. You're going to meet these three groups of people. They're going to help you. They're going to take care of you. Your father, he's found the asses. He's worried about you. We're going to anoint you king. You're going to be, you know, a king of, of war. He's afraid of Goliath and all Israel. God gives him a commission to go wipe out Amimelech, and he saves the best and eliminates himself, the king. 
He disobeys God and he's just rotten. So he dies by his own sword. His armor bearer doesn't want to get in trouble. That's my right hand man right there. So Saul died. And his three sons and all his house died together. What a shame. And when all the men of Israel that were in the valley saw that they fled, and that Saul and his sons were dead, they forsook their cities and fled. And Philistines came upon and became and dwelt in them. So what a misery. What a what a conquest is Israel of God. Their king is dead in the battlefield by his own sword. Because of sin. And it came to pass on a morrow, the next day, we say tomorrow. When the Philistines came to strip the slain, I mean, gathered the, the booty, gathered the weapons, the armor, money, whatever they have on them, food, that they found Saul and his sons fallen in Mount Gabil. Here's the king. Here's that. Oh, wow, look what I got. And when they had stripped him, they, they took his head, beheaded him, and his armor, and sent into the land of the Philistines round about to carry tidings, news, headlines, unto their idols and to the people. Notice how they, they sent the news to their idols first. You mean their idols didn't know it? And it's not the news today brought apart first upon the idols, the television set, and then to the people? And they put his armor in the house of their gods and fastened his head to the temple of Dagon to broadcast through all Dagon's area. Dagon has won. Dagon has the victory. Our gods are greater than the gods of Israel. Thank you very much, Saul. That's what the, that's the leg, legacy of Saul's death. Dagon won the battle. And many Christians who die, they're saved. And their entire life gives off to the fallen gods and not Jesus Christ. The glory goes to the world. Their life was so miserable and so wicked and so abandoned from God, so disrespectful to God, so not listening to God, Dagon gets to worship. And when all Jabez Gilead heard all that the Philistines had done to Saul, they arose all the valiant men and took away the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons and brought them to Jabesh and buried their bones under the oak in Jabesh and fasted seven days. Now, hopefully we can get back to that afterwards. But... These men of Jabez Gilead, we can't have our military leader, we can't have our brother, the same uh, tribe of, of Benjamin. We can't leave him over there in the Philistine. He can't be nailed to that, that wall, that temple of Dagon. So they go and grab the body and the head. And they bring him back into the land to give him a proper burial. Now Saul died for his transgressions. The wages of sin is death. which he committed against the Lord. Look at that. We sin against the Lord. Even against the word of the Lord. Whoa, look at that one. Which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it. So, not only do people sin against God, but they sin against the word. And when you get a preacher that comes up to you or a Christian that tells you how to be saved and you don't do it, you are sinning against God and the word. So the Bible says he sinned against God and that's what brought his death. He rebelled against the word of God. And he died. Now let's look at something interesting. Uh, let's finish chapter, pardon me, verse 14. Inquired not of the Lord. He went to a witch instead of the Lord. 
He called the, 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 the psychic phone number. He went to the flea market and went to the woman who has the cards or the, the crystal ball. Therefore he slew him. The Lord slew him and turned the kingdom unto David, the son of Jesse. And we'll pick that up in the next chapter. King Saul is dead. We're going to bring across David. Now let's look at this death of Saul for a moment. 1 Samuel 28. 1 Samuel 28. When I first saw this verse, 1 Samuel 28, I was like, wow. You know, young Christian I was, 1 Samuel 28, 16. I said, hey, there's a possibility that Saul was saved. Reading 1 Samuel only and not studying the scriptures yet. 1 Samuel 28, 16. This is the witch of Endor. This is the one the familiar spirit, verse 7. But verse 15. And Samuel said to the Lord, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me. Here we are. And God has departed from me. Here we are. And answers me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore have I called thee that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. Now you may say, well, it said that, you know, he didn't go after God. He went after the, the woman, the familiar spirit, and says here, well, God wouldn't answer him. That's after all the times he didn't listen to God. And when it came to the final point in Saul's life that he just not ever listened to God, God said, hey, you're in a very important time of your life. I'm not listening to you. You weren't listening to me before. People got to realize if you pull God too far, there's trouble. And verse 16, then says Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask of me, seeing the Lord is departed from thee and has become thy enemy? That's what we're reading now. And the Lord has done to him as he has spoken by me, for the Lord has rent the kingdom out of thy hand. That's what we just read. And giving it to thy neighbor, even David. That's what we're going to read, Lord willing, next time. Because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, there's the word, nor executest the fierce wrath upon the Limanach. Therefore has the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. Now watch verse 19. Scripture with scripture now. Let's just read verse 19 with not the rest of the Bible. Moreover, the Lord will be will also deliver Israel when they are in the hands of the Philistines. And tomorrow, it's two in the space tomorrow, shalt thou and thy sons be with me. Now, would you think Samuel in his life, do you think he went to hell? I don't think so. And Samuel says, tomorrow you, Jonathan, and all your sons and, and you are going to be with me. I think Jonathan went to heaven. Well, it was in heaven. And you got to say, well, where did they go? Well, let's ask the, the author and God, Luke 16, 19. I think Jonathan and his father were completely separated. But they were in the same place. And completely separated. But in the same place. And you say, what on earth are you talking about? Look at me years we got to go. Look at me years we got to go into the Bible. In Luke chapter 16, the words of Jesus in red... 1622. All right. Let's look at Saul and his sons here. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Oh, they didn't go to heaven. This is no death, burial, and resurrection yet. So those that did right by the will of God and obeyed God, went to a place called Abraham's bosom. That's where Samuel is. And Samuel says, Saul, your sons and I are going to be here. So there are some sons that are in Abraham's bosom, and I believe one of them is Jonathan. 
the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes. So there is a place in the, before the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. There's a place called Abraham's bosom, and there's a place called hell. The Old Testament speaks about hell, and ain't no hells inside the earth. So what is this Abraham's place? Let's find out. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments. Seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. So you see, okay, the men in hell can see Abraham, Abraham's bosom. They can see Abraham. They can see Lazarus. That means a man that has gone into hell can see Samuel. And Samuel says it's the same place. But we need to pick up. Uh, we're not looking at the guy in hell. Verse 25. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things. Likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Oh, there's two differences. Abraham's bosom, they're resting, they're nice, it's got a great life. Those are in hell are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, over there in hell, there's a great gulf fix. So the same place is inside the center of the earth. The only difference is we are on Abraham's side. We are resting. We've done what God has told you to do. You're on hell's side because you disobeyed God. You rejected God. And it, we're in the same place. We can see each other. There's, there's this gulf that's between us. So when Samuel tells Saul, you and your sons are going to be here, you're going to be with me. The only problem is there's a gulf between. But there they are. Until the resurrection of Jesus Christ and he takes paradise and brings it up into heaven. The book of Revelation. So. We come to the end of Jonathan's life. And if he only had stayed with David. He would be still living as David is still living. When Saul dies in Mount Gilboa. Remember David is in Ziglag. God has pulled him as far as he can away from Saul. God doesn't want anybody to even think of the idea that David killed Saul. And remember when David, just to keep things busy, he gets a zigzag. He realizes that these people come, have taken the camp, taken their wives, taken their children. And David has to go fight these invaders. And while he's fighting the invaders, Saul is fighting the Philistine and loses. Now, we got another little interesting thing here. Well, we got some time, I believe. That it says in verse number 12. They buried their bones under the oak in Jabez. Now, that's an interesting thing. Genesis 35. Genesis 35. We're going to look at some of the oak. I mean, they say that Christ died on a dogwood tree. I don't see dogwood tree anywhere in the Bible. But I do see maybe an oak. Genesis 35. And in Genesis 35, verse 4. And we'll start in verse 3. Jacob. And let us arise and go up to Bethel. And I will make there an altar unto God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and was with me in the way which I went. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand. You mean rosary beads? I don't know. Something like that. And all their earrings. That's the first time earrings shows up. <laughs> Isn't that interesting where earrings shows up? Referencing to gods which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the oak, which was by Shechem. I believe there's a, a song out there, under the old oak tree. Tie a yellow ribbon. I think it was an oak tree. That one I'm not sure. 
But that's not it for, for Jacob. Let's take our uh, verse chap same chapter, verse 8. Genesis 35, 8. But Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, that's his mother's nurse, died, and she was buried beneath Bethel under an oak. Well, so far, idols and earrings have been buried under an oak. Here's a woman, a nurse, who has died. She's buried under an oak. The body of Saul has been buried under an oak. And Joshua 24, 26. Joshua 24, 26. This is a little extra scripture for scripture here about an oak. 24, 26. And Joshua wrote these words. Now remember Joshua, he's like, hey, you know, who are you going to serve? Are you going to serve the Lord or are you going to serve the gods of our fathers on the other side? He tells them, get rid of these idols. Get rid of these gods. And then they don't. They don't hand them over like they, Jacob did. They just have a mouth service like Christians do. And since they don't turn over their gods, verse 26, Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God and took a great stone and set it up there under an oak that was by the sanctuary. So they don't turn their gods over. Jacob sets up a stone as a reminder what has happened. Judges 6.11. Judges 6.11. I don't know what to do with this one, but look, Judges 6, 11, And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak. That's interesting. An angel. Someone's buried. Idols are buried. There's a monument set up under an oak. And here an angel is sitting under an oak. And the same chapter, verse, verse 19 Judges 6, 19. And Gideon went in and made ready a kid, an unleavened cake of ephod of flour. The flesh he put in a basket, and he put, you know, that's what the law said to do. And he put the broth, that's the first time broth shows up, in a pot, and brought it out unto him under the oak and presented it. So here's his angel, he's sitting under the oak. Gideon brings his offering, and it's under that oak. So, huh? I have a note in my Bible. Yeah, 15, 15 oaks. oaks. Uh, 2 Samuel 18, 9. 2 Samuel 18, 9. Uh, I'll stretch my neck out, and I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna assure and affirm, but maybe it was an oak that Christ died on. But I don't have that proof. Eighteen nine, Second Samuel. And Absalom met the servants of God, and Absalom rode under, rode upon a mule, and the mule went under the thick boughs of a great oak, and his head caught hold of the oak and he was taken up between the heaven and the earth and the mule that was under him went away now he doesn't die in that yoke oak but he is hanging in that oak and Absalom is a type of the Antichrist he's been vile to David and he ends up hanging in an oak and one more place Ezekiel 6.13 you see, I mean, there are other places, but these are just the interesting ones. A concordance will, will help you find in other places. In Ezekiel 6.13, 
Then shall ye know that I am the Lord. When their slain men shall be among their idols. I'm going to kill your men. They're going to hang out with the idols. Round about the altars. Upon every high hill. In all the tops of the mountains. And upon every green tree. And under every thick oak. There is religious worship service of idolatry and fallen gods, small g-o-d-s, under oaks. Oaks don't have anything really good to be in the Bible. I just thought that was just a little interesting, a little extra about oaks. <laughs>